Hello there. So, I want a space where I could just talk about things. So here we are. It's kind of like a vlog. It's a, a vlog. A video log. What do you call it a vlog? So, it's something I've been talking to a lot of people about, but basically anyone who knows I used to stream on Twitch asked me about it or will come up in the conversation at some point because it's just a topic between streamers. So, last time I streamed on Twitch, it was the November of 2021. Ever since then, I've made a permanent move to YouTube and, well, there's a couple of reasons for that. I uh, thought I'd just talk about it a little bit since it's kind of stuff I like to think about. Analytics, growth, discovery on these kind of social media platforms, how to go about them. So first up, uh, this isn't a, I think this way is better. This is basically a situation which is beneficial for me as how I like to create content as a creator. I don't call myself a streamer. I've never called myself a streamer. Just keep that in mind. So basically on Twitch, you have two ways to grow, broadly speaking. Uh, one is the social route, where you, whether it starts on Twitter, it starts on Discord, or it starts on Twitch itself, you essentially rely on raids from people with viewers to bring in viewers to your stream. So obviously, uh, that requires actually creating a social circle. It's not as reliant on you just absolutely grinding it out, but even though you start on Twitter or Discord, eventually you'll need to create the social circle primarily on Twitch, which requires you to go around and actually be active in other people's streams. So for me, that was uh, probably not the best way to go about it. I don't like text chat. I hate typing to chat at all. Uh, I do make an effort to show up to some friend streams whenever they stream. I call it my once a month Twitch visit and I literally only show up once a month and I'll stay for about 10 minutes at most. If I stay longer than that, I've left the stream on and walked off. That's kind of just like that. I don't like watching streams. That's just not me. Uh, so the other way you can stream or you can grow on Twitch is to just grind it out. Just grind the hours. So that's mainly related to how you can be discovered. So obviously one way of being discovered is the social way. You get raids from other people with viewers. The other way is to just be active on Twitch, which requires you to be live constantly because Twitch has no way of discovering people who are offline. So basically that means you need to do hours and also if your time zone doesn't match up with the language you stream in mainly. You know, typically they say English streamers, you have viewers the whole day no matter what. There's still a bigger concentration of English viewers at different times. So that didn't really work out for me because the time I streamed at the most was actually uh, basically Europe's asleep, America is going to sleep, and Asia is just getting round to the end of the day. So not a big volume of English viewers in general. Also in terms of grinding, the hours, typically speaking, it's suggested that if you're going to be grinding the hours on Twitch to grow, you're looking at, at minimum 4 hour streams. T uh, typically more, people say. I'll put it pretty bluntly, uh, it's not actually that big a problem in terms of the actual stream grind for me. The actual problem is in my physical health. So basically, if I go over 2 hours, honestly, my body starts hurting all over. It's pretty straining to... Um, do other things as in it's actually affecting my daily life if I go over two hours of a, a stream. So it's not great. It's pretty much just um, I haven't taken care of myself that well as I grew up. So if you're planning to be a streamer, take care of yourself. Like this is the one advice I can give. Take care of your body. If you're gonna sit still or even if you have standing desk so you're standing, you're still staying in one spot for a long time when you stream. Yeah, you can go and stretch and stuff, but you know, you don't want to leave your stream for that long. So in the end, like, if I want to take a break, I am taking a good half hour break. So that obviously that's a work for streaming. But if you can recover from a quick, like, two minute toilet break or drink break, and you're good to go again, you're still mostly fine. So in regards to that, those are two basic avenues of discovery on Twitch that didn't work for me. So I decided to make the move to YouTube after I saw that Twitch was Increasingly looking like uh, they were very much trying to cash in quickly and then sell the platform. 
I'll, I don't know if they're actually going to sell the platform. Um, well, Amazon's going to sell the platform since uh, that's just some things from bigger creators that I've heard. But the direction they were going was more directed towards making money quickly and it didn't necessarily help the creators. So I decided to just move completely off the platform and go to YouTube. So on terms of YouTube, I had actually tried using it as a streaming platform. Let's be real. Uh, discovery for streams is terrible on Twitch. They only ever advertise on the front page people who already partnered. So what I mean by that is, if you don't know, partner requires 75 average viewers. Basically everyone on the front page I've ever seen has over 100, 200 viewers. I doubt that is just their viewers plus what it, however many people on the front page. I, I highly doubt that. So it basically means that they only advertise people who are already partnered. So there's no chance of you being on the front page. I think at minimum, if you want to go find someone, you either need to know their name, which if people can find you in some other way, that's already very good. But otherwise, they have to click. If you're like at the bottom of the viewer, say you have no viewers. Let's just say you're just starting off, you have no viewers. So if someone has to go into browse, that's one click. Click into the category they want to watch, that's two clicks. Then, if they actually want to look for someone who's smaller, they have to go in and actually change the sorting. That's three clicks already. Actually, no, I think you also have to sort by another metric. But either way, that's at minimum three clicks. So, no one actually does that. Well, 90% of people don't do that. There are people who go out of their way to look for smaller streamers, but the average viewer probably won't. That's just the reality. So, on YouTube, streams are even harder to find. It doesn't recommend streams at all, but it does recommend videos. So, I have taken full advantage of YouTube Shorts in particular for, in terms of growth. I can pretty much say it in my analytics. Uh, between the time where I was doing Shorts for Pokemon Shining Pearl and into Pokemon Arceus, I grew pretty much 50 subscribers within a month very rapidly. It's kind of wild how much you can just grow on Shorts alone. So I'd say YouTube Shorts, lots of the free things that YouTube actually provides now is by far the most useful as a creator. Um, the way I describe it to people is that Shorts is the same as TikTok. So right now you have YouTube as a video platform and then you have YouTube Live, which is basically Twitch now. Uh, I made the move before raids and gift subs were a thing. So I will say it is a thing that's more recent that YouTube has YouTube Live has now become like Twitch. But basically, with the gift subs and raids now available on YouTube, YouTube Live is basically Twitch. And then you have YouTube Shorts, which is basically TikTok. And with the way TikTok works is that the content just gets shoved in your face. And as far as I can tell, YouTube is actually better at getting content that you like to you than TikTok. I was on TikTok for a video. I lasted about half an hour on there before, honestly, it was just giving me so much Zuma stuff, I didn't want to be there anymore. Uh, I might try and make another video at some point, but hey, that's not what we're talking about here. So, basically, on YouTube now, I've been using shorts to grow, I can use videos to grow, and then streams are extra. So, this is something I took to heart for, from like, the, um, was it, those help channels for creators, for content creators. Basically, if you're being a streamer on YouTube, it's completely different from being a streamer on Twitch. When someone comes to your channel on YouTube, your videos are the main content. Your shorts can be the things that guide them there, and then if you're live, when they happen to check your channel, that's an extra. So you don't live stream on YouTube to basically stream and expect people to come watch the stream. You put it up there and someone happens to hit your channel as you're streaming, they'll come check you out if they think your content is actually any good. Also, that's another thing. Uh, you don't know if content is good on Twitch until you've clicked into the stream and actually stayed there for a while. On YouTube, you can be streaming. The person doesn't have to click into your stream. They can click into your videos. Like, if they like your videos, they can come to your stream and actually communicate with you directly. So that's fine. Regardless, with uh, the fact that you can use shorts and videos to grow on YouTube. It was a lot better for myself. Remember that my main condition on in terms of um, not grinding 
streams on Twitch is actually my physical health. So it's not something I can easily control at this point, because I'll be real, uh, I am getting on my ears compared to a lot of the um, younger VTuber community, which I talk to people that are 10 years younger than me, it's absolutely wild. Uh, I know like other people are older than me and there's other people like not that much younger than me, but still, it's kind of wild how much younger the uh, VTuber community is, it's, along with the fact that it's also much newer, so it's all like young people that got into the trend while all the older people were already established and they didn't climb up the trend quite as much. But with videos and with shorts, it's much simpler to grind the, well basically grind the growth of the channel. So if you're not familiar with YouTube's algorithm, basically you're looking at making video content that's under 50 minutes. Um, typically the shorter the video the better is what I understand, but you still want to be over a certain length because um, the main metric that YouTube looks at isn't your subscriber count or your, as far as I know, not actually your view count, it's actually your view duration and likes and maybe comments. Seems like interaction with your video does increase the reach of it quite, by quite a bit because any shorts that I put up that gets liked, I'll come back an hour later and it will have probably about 100 more views just out of nowhere. So if it gets liked at all, it literally just gets thrown at everyone's face. It's actually kind of amazing. So you're not really reliant on a subscriber count. Obviously you need it for your channel URL and for monetization. But overall, that's not actually very important. Like, you look at any big YouTuber, whenever they talk about analytics, they always say 40, like over 50, 60% typically is people not subscribe to their channel that are watching your videos. So, I don't know, from my perspective, follow count is the dumbest thing in the world. It's just a number that doesn't mean anything because most people will just follow or on YouTube subscribe. Uh, and they'll just never come back. So I don't know what happens when people actually um, was it follow account celebrations and it's just like your view account hasn't grown at all and your view duration hasn't grown at all. It's just like, you're still streaming to the same couple of people except that there's now another 200 people that's followed and never come back. That's, I don't know, that's how I see it a lot of time. Obviously some of them will stay. So your view account will grow very slowly. Your view duration will grow very slowly, but I don't know, that's, that's just kind of like some of the things I think about sometimes. Well, anyways, uh, this is kind of a video for me to rant. Might make more of these, might not, who knows. I just wanted some way to talk and you know, I'm not gonna twit longer. Those are for the really, you're emotion either emotionally down or you have something, some statement that needs to be put into words that has to stay somewhere. I don't know if Twitter actually keeps twit longest for that long and whether people can find it, but a written document, you know, more official. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna hear, I'm just gonna rant, I'm just gonna talk. Uh, I might throw the stuff, anything that's relevant onto screen. I don't know, I don't even have a background. I've got a green screen behind me right now, so I can throw whatever the heck I want. But hey, if there's anything else I wanna talk about, maybe I'll just like throw this up and just start talking. I'm literally just talking straight at my mic and my screen, so hey. Well, anyways, that was kind of all I wanted to talk about, so. Uh, if anything else comes up that I just kind of want to have a rant about, uh, might do this again. But anyways, see you all.